Hello, and um, I'm going to make a video about my um, audio equipment um, purchases, refurbishment, and um, just um, um, you know, listening to um, tape media and record media and um, CD media um i've been watching a lot of uh youtube videos of late and um lots of uh, lots of them um encourage you to listen to analog um especially tape and um i just thought well let's let's try it i bought this tape player um years ago and uh, decided to pull it out and uh, use it and see um, how the audio sounds like and uh, here um, obviously um, when I was doing so I found that um, this tape recorder squeaks a lot and uh, so I went on to um, YouTube, obviously, and found lots and lots of videos about repairing cassette decks. And um, so I, my interest grew and grew and grew. And so I um, come to make a video. Um, detailing all this so I went on to uh, Gumtree and uh, looked for stereo equipment to buy um, and um, this is what I found um, so on eBay there was this um, Awa NSX um, D5 and on Gumtree there was this um, tape deck and a NAD amplifier going for 30 pounds and the AWA is uh, went for um, 50 pounds uh, I got it in in, um, in the end for 50 pounds so this AWA um, it's nothing special it's just that I had it in my childhood and uh, um, I like I like it and it's a you know a uh, uh, remembering the past sort of a uh, purchase so this there was lots of faults um, well the the tape deck and uh, amplifier uh, were a bit unknown uh, but the, the AWA had uh, faults with the CD and so I thought I'll just chance it and buy it and uh, see w what happens so here is this um, hidden away in my um, garage and uh, ready to for me to hook up and uh, listen to and find out what the faults were so at the end of the day um, the A were uh, was fine in terms of the lower half of it which was the amplifier but the upper half the tape decks and the CD player um, were um, broken um, in some ways so the CD player would eject but we put a CD in it uh, it won't play uh, the tape player um, had issues so I opened it up and uh, had a film and uh, then put it to one side and decided to film the um, the amplifier, the NAD amplifier and uh, I was just going through testing the whole thing before cleaning it up and then um, plugging it into uh, um, the speakers and testing it out with a CD player or something of such
I think in the end I um, also cleaned up the tape deck and plugged that in. So yeah, I was just like showing you the back here. You see how dirty the connections are. Um, and this was purchased from a, a lady who was an artist of some sort and uh, she was getting rid of it after years and years of ownership and uh, as you can see it's never been cleaned and uh, yeah these jumpers here I just pulled out they look, they look pretty okay there's no rust on them uh, and as you can see the, the speaker connections um, for some reason uh, well this this seems to be quite old and so you can't put banana plugs into those uh, connections and then I found this impedance switch as well switching from 8 ohm speakers to 4 ohm speakers which is quite a good thing and as you can see uh, uh, when I turn it upside down you can see that it's missing front uh, feet and uh, replaced by some sort of play-doh or plasticine and um, the say of it was just filthy really for a piece of audio equipment so I lifted the top and inside you can see look look at that that is just full of cobwebs and dirt gained over the years and if it's on the power supply if it's too much of it I could turn it on and it will um, burn or blow or something so I've just put in a plug down to show you that everything's unplugged if you open a piece of audio equipment up um, best to have it unplugged and uh, just showing you the state of it and it seems to be on one side really and uh, the capacitors are big but seems to be okay they, they're not bulging like um, these these other videos that tells you how to replace the capacitors because capacitors are the one that um, seems to fail in old um, electronic equipment so here you can see mechanical switches uh, front switches connected to to the back via these long plastic rods and uh, to this white thing at the back for um, switching between the inputs um, yeah I mean it looks like very simple very uh, very um, neat and tidy there is a NAD 3112 motherboard uh, the back's got a serial number, of course. Um, looking at some other components there. And that's it, yeah. So, what am I going to do? I'm probably just going to clean it up. So, get the hoover out and... Um, and a, the brush and maybe an air duster blow the air away brush off the dirt um, vacuum uh, all the bits up and uh, we'll see here you go 1995 issue 3 Nut Electronics There is, and you see my brush, and you see my uh, vacuum cleaner, and I've just had a, a quick go. You know, cobwebs are gone. Um, this side is a bit hard to reach, and still looks a bit dirty. I'll give that another go. Uh, been cleaning it, and between the capacitors, uh, but you know. At least 
if I turn it on now, uh, there's no risk of it burning cobwebs and then blowing up. So yeah, so I flipped the machine upside down and took the back cover off. And there's a panel that gives you access to inside there and on the circuit board I couldn't see anything major. Um, and uh, as you see there, it's quite quite a neat design where they've just cut the panel out of the the back, the bottom, flipped it, flipped it around, and then screwed it on. And how these holes and tabs are uh, made allows you to do that without it falling back in. So there, yeah. So I put some white feet on and in the end I, I actually swapped out those particular feet because they weren't tall enough. So here I have um, the tape deck and again that's pretty dirty. It had a label on it that got peeled off and uh, just showing you yeah in the top a bit scratched but doesn't bother me um, in that sense, it was only um, 20 pounds, so what I'm going to do is just um, give that a clean and see how it goes. So um, I think I'm going to open up the, the cassette holder and have a look inside to see, yeah, to see the dirt, see Look at that, that's absolutely filthy. And I did put a tape into test when I was um, when I went to view it, but obviously I'd taken a tape that could be, you know, chewed up and thrown away. And there it is, there's the, the cover completely off. Um yeah, these just unclip off the front just fine. Um, and it will allow me to get access to uh, the heads in there, get some cotton um, buds or Q-tips uh, and then clean them, um, give it a real clean. There's the model, the Sherwood um, cassette deck and The reason for that, for getting the Sherwood, was like I got a Sherwood um, AV um, or, um, audio receiver, and uh, although I don't use it anymore, I, I it was it was okay for what it did, and so I thought, why not go for a, a tape deck that Sherwood branded. So here you go, that's me looking at the tape and everything there seems to be okay. I mean, there's no snap um, bands, snap rubber bands or anything like that. I mean, it's full of cobwebs and dirt, but hopefully that will work. Um, yeah, and so the power supply seems to be okay. No major scorch marks. So, you know, visual inspection seems to be, seem to indicate that it's um, safe. And the board itself is uh, very simple. I mean, there's a few chips on there. Uh, yeah, and And everything seems fine. So, uh, yeah, I think my next step is going to give it a hoover, a brush down, and uh, a clean up. Yeah, 
so in case oh yeah so this is another close up of the belts uh, and the tape mechanism or transport as uh, some people some expert call them um, I in the end I didn't remove the, the whole transport mechanism out to clean I just did my best accessing the front and the back and there, there's me giving it a blow with the, the air duster Yeah, lovely sound. Um, the only issue I found with using the air duster is that it gets a bit cold and the air condenses on what you're blowing. And um, I don't know whether that is um, good in terms of does it damage whatever it lands on this um, condensed vapor coming out of the air because the the air is like, oh look yeah look at that I just pointing out that I found a hair twined up on one of the um, real um, mo um, spinners or motor whatever there it is so oh there me going in and um, remo removing that disgusting piece of hair whoa so there is none in that one that one seems okay so that one seems to be mistreated a bit um, there, there you go I've got some tape um, I've got some cassette tapes out and maybe to test or whatever so yeah there you go so putting it in seems not to be a problem and then I think I was trying to yeah the eject mechanism seems to be like spring open on that side uh, instead of a a smooth um, reveal which is um, what's it doing on the the B side there it is, power it's all got some um LED indicators. Uh, so I was trying to just to see it's working, level indicators, um that's spinning and she's trying a few knobs without actually uh, producing any sound because at this stage I didn't have any well I didn't have the amplifier and I didn't have any uh, speakers to hook up and uh, get any sound out I suppose I could have plugged um, some headphones in that uh, jack there there's Dolby Dolby B and C noise reduction which um watching a few um, YouTube videos about cassette decks they don't do anymore so the newer decks don't have um, Dolby noise reduction at all because Dolby stopped licensing um, that technology so that was a, a funny thing to uh, know and there it is um, playing on that side, the A side so yeah, it's still quite dirty. So yeah, you have the uh, replay button, don't know. Uh, replay P, don't know what that means. Uh, AMS is auto, uh, mechanical search is it um 
and it seems to work but um, later on I did find that it actually was quite temperamental and only worked on one side um, so maybe that's down to um, the heads yeah, it is, uh, it's like it seems to move, be moving okay the belt seems to be okay as well but obviously some experts would see that and say oh it's too slack or um, too tight or something like that but I I don't know any better than that it seems okay so I think uh, I clean it up pop the lid back on and uh, plug it in and use it and see how it goes um, so what does the next video yeah so the next video is me um, setting things up in the living room um, and uh, testing out the speakers, the AWA speakers connected to the NAD amplifier and this is my uh, a, a record player, an AWA record player that I've already um, have and um, I plugged that in and tested out the speakers there you go, a record playing and the pixies playing away. And before I get any copyright um, notices, I think I'll move on. And then that's me, uh, I think, testing another one. Here we go. And then this me testing the tape deck. So there it is. Uh, all cleaned up, all nice and shiny, all nice smart. So these are my um, original C uh, cassettes I had when uh, in my youth when I uh, had money to buy original stuff and uh, Deacon Blue being oh, what have you got a tape in there uh, De Deacon Blue being one of the the bands that um, I bought music and listened to um, so a Scottish band a uh, bit bluesy and uh, so I'm just going to play one of the tracks here. I think I go through quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of work testing out the the tape deck using fast forward and. So I get no sound at the moment. Why is that? Um, so here it is again. Um, probably with the sound fixed this time. There we go. So here me going through the auto search, the auto skip. So auto music search it's called AMS um and yeah as i say i found that only it only works 
temperamentally and uh, I only worked on one side, the mainly the B side of the deck. So, next time I think I'll turn the volume up for a bit of a sample, but... Next, oh yeah, so same again for uh, another track on the first album, um, Rain Town. And, uh, here we go. So, stick that in and it seems to all work, I mean, I, um... Yeah, I made some of these videos, I might stick it on YouTube if um, the sound quality is good enough. But um, I don't think so. So I think that is it. That's me messing more with the tape. Um, uh, is this me? Yeah, so testing the amp. So I hook up my um, Philips CD player. There it is, my Philips CD player to the amp, and then I'm just going to test how um, my Pixies Surferosa CD sounds like. And um, yeah, and um, what can I say? It plays, it works. Um, so the nice thing about this situation is that messing about with older equipment just made me watch more YouTube videos about a high high end audio equipment and audio file um sound sound or music track or songs or artists and there you go. Yeah, so this time I learnt turn up the volume and play it. So where is my mind? Uh, where is my mind? I mean, uh, quite famous Pixies track that gets covered um, all over YouTube. So nothing like hearing the original at a high volume. So yeah, uh, where is my mind? So, uh, another another Pixie CD, Monkey Gone to Heaven, and then uh, Pixie Vinyl, Monkey Gone to Heaven, Dancing the Manta Ray, yeah, so it's not just Manta Ray, Dancing the Manta Ray. So there it is, um, I think I posted a, a YouTube video of this, this one, Manta Ray. So, okay, so here we're back into the garage, and this is me um, again playing a track on this stereo cassette deck, this, um, this Philips. Yeah, this this Philips um, Ghetto Blaster or portable uh, CD cassette player. So this is a terrible uh, system, um, but that was the only thing I could afford in my my um, 
teenage years. Um, and I bought this to when I started um, listening to a lot of music and I wanted to listen to it on CDs. And obviously, you know, um, my friends had CDs which I could borrow, but I couldn't play them on anything and I couldn't record them if I liked the music. So I had to buy this um, cassette player uh, with DVD so I can I can do that. Um, my previous audio equipment was just a um, cassette deck. So that had the radio on it, but uh, no CD, so I, c I couldn't um, copy any music from my friends. So this is what I ended up buying, and it was a terrible device. It sounded awful. But years and years ago, I saw it um, being sold on eBay, and I bought it just for uh, a memory sake, really, nostalgia. And it's still going. So cassette plays, CD plays a bit temperamental, uh, but it plays CDs. Do doesn't play CDRs or anything like that, but. Here we go, so one of my original um, music collection on tape, Julian Cope, Peggy Suicide, um, and that Say Surfer playing in the background. And uh, yeah, uh, that's what I had, and this, this eBay um, cassette deck's a bit dented in the... Um, speaker grills but so yeah so after the the clean up of the um the NAT amplifier and the uh, Sherwood cassette deck I went on to uh spend a bit of time opening up the the Awa and having a look at what's going on wrong um, going wrong so the tape decks were temperamental and look you see that this is um, this soldered piece of uh, wire has come off and down there is a broken uh, belt then there's me trying to pull it out filming at the same time just didn't work my target was just off <laughs> uh, and yeah there you go look broken 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 um, so the funny thing about they were internal is like these things here I have no idea what they are they're just a piece of me uh, wire quite stiff stuck to the board and you see, someone's been in here and done things. And you see these blue marks on the, the motherboard? It's like as if they tested it and then um, either marked it as OK or not OK. But uh, down there, there's just, again, cobwebs. But this one is not as bad as um, the other two uh, devices. So I... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at that and I can see more broken belts. So either one belt's gone flying everywhere or both decks, belts disappeared. So yeah, and I think what I found was that one side played okay, one side was broken, this side was broken, obviously because that connector came out. Um, so they played okay, uh, but obviously they didn't forward or rewind or search or anything like that because the belt for that purpose was broken. So here I am just pointing out what screws to um, undo to get this this middle shelf out the way. So I can have a look at the CD player which is hiding underneath. So there's me. Pulling this off. 
and uh, yeah, looking at more belts. Yeah, so the just like ribbons and connectors connected to this board, and some of them are disconnectable. Uh, some aren't. So here, two connections to the um, cassette tape transport. And uh, yeah, and there's me pointing out everything and making a mental um, note of uh, where they connect back to. And um, then me taking it out and then um, showing you the CD player. So this came as a uh, broken CD player part and the seller noted that the lens had been changed but he suspected that where there was a um, broken motor um, to, uh, in, in terms of it spinning the disc. So there's the original lens that he replaced uh and yeah and subsequently i tested that and it it, it is dead so he's right to replace it uh, but the thing that was wrong with it i had to really investigate why um it won't spin so i think here my next step was to remove the cassette transports so I can get into um, removing the CD. So these had to come out anyway for a good clean, I think. So I started um, removing some sc screws. And here I'm trying to take that tab at the side off. And the trick is that you have to have the tape um, open, the tape deck open for it to release the contact on that side. There you go. So you have to have that open and that just pulls off. You can see it connects. It holds it back in by connecting down there. So, And I was like trying to focus on that. Is that rust? I was asking now. It's like um, just brown. Um, Yeah, some more screws that I need to undo before it comes out. So I undo them and it comes out and you can see oh, there's hair, there's dust, dog hair, human hair, hair the dog. Um, what else can we see? Uh, not sure. So at some point I need to go and clean those um, and then solder this broken piece of wire on. Um, so what I found was like immediately um, that bit th that bit at the side fell off. That pointy bit on the um, top. So I didn't know where that came from and so I took the other one off and uh, yeah and then forgot that I need to open it and then I remembered so I opened it and then I pulled it off yeah so I took it off just to see where the um, spring like thing came from and there it is, it just sits on top there. Uh, pressing something down, I'm not sure what. But uh, removing that, it was like quite wobbly and it looks like that was about to break too. As you see there, it had come dis detached but not completely. And there's me going, oh, how does that, how's that gonna stay?
So in the end, I got um, I got a bit of a super glue and just glued it back in place. It looks like it looks like it's there for the um, spring, and obviously the pressure on the spring has broken it. But uh, oh, look, see how dirty that is. That's just like filth. And uh, yeah, those connections are fine on this side of the tape deck. Um, and overall, it, it looks pretty good. So it's just a matter of um, putting new belts on and putting one belt on and it looks like the inner belt the, the belt to the top part you see you see where the dirt yeah initially I was looking at this uh, second groove on this uh, black uh, spinny thing um, but it wasn't that it was like the inner one at the back so here me pointing out the screws to uh, remove to remove the um, CD transport or caddy or enclosure and it just comes out like that and nice one piece and going to have a visual inspection everything seems to be okay it's like what can go wrong doesn't look like anything's broken or falling off and um, yeah, and uh, what, what can I say? What can I do? Um, let's try to let's turn that massive white cog at the front. Um, Oh yeah, this thing is closing in on the motors. As you can see, there's m two motors um, connecting the CD drive. Uh, one is to move the drive head backwards and forwards, and one is to spin the disc. And so, one of these are not working, or both, or which one. So I plugged it back in, and put power to the um, device and press the open button and it does open and when you close it it does close and here's me trying to find out whether where the fault was um, so initially I, I didn't know but there's me yeah so there's me ejecting and then closing I think I, I'm gonna I cut it in a funny angle and I can put a CD in but uh, there you go see it opens and closed and there's the um, laser trying to seek the CD uh, so it can read it and subsequent uh, watching of videos on YouTube says that the laser should be okay if it's doing that so it's not the laser that's the problem uh, there there's me trying to put a CD <laughs> in at a vertical angle which is not going to work um, with that device so I stop filming uh, put it in and put it in and then spun it upside down and now I'm going to spin it back up the right way I'm going to eject again and uh, then film to see what it does 
there you see there it's still um I'm trying to read it but it's not spinning look so it's like hey man spin up so I'm like spinning it to see if it to see if it does read and um nothing happens at all so I went away and um, tried to find videos on people repairing CDs that don't spin. And uh, there's hardly any videos like that at all. There's um, lots and lots of videos about how to fix a CD uh, player that doesn't open or doesn't close. But when you look at uh, disc not spinning, you just end up with loads of PlayStation 2 or 3 uh, videos about them not spinning the disc. And um, it's a, yeah, there's me. Yeah, there's me about to uh, swap the laser head just to see it was, it was a laser. And um, I wish I hadn't done it now because in doing so, I think I um broken a bit of cog. Um, so there are tiny, delicate cogs to s to move the heads back and forth. And uh, I think I broke I broke one of the teeth, or a few teeth on it. I'm not sure. So see this top cog here, top cog here. Yeah, so I've taken the screw off. So initially, I the screw itself um, had been threaded. It's like the previous engineer went in and completely screwed up the the head. So in get, instead of getting a, a fine cross like on the other cog, it was just like um, a hole. So there it is. So I can show you, showing you that the teeth now have broken. So, um, yeah, so I was just pointing there, look, and you see that the, the teeth that it attaches to seem to have uh, been roughed up as well, so. Um, but I, I put it back and I tested the, the action of that cog and it seems fine. It seems to do its business, so it's still got a bite on it. But my ultimate problem was this thing not spinning. And here's me um, trying to look at the laser without burning my eyes out. Because obviously, there, there look, you can see it moving. And at some point, you, you do see um, the laser working. But, um, yeah, uh, other videos will warn you not to look into the laser, obviously, because it will just kill you burn the back of your membrane, eye membrane, and cause you uh, some eye problems. But um, at, at that moment, look, yeah, so it still had bites. So me, that's, that's me turning and it's fine. So yeah, um, if you watch this video and you can tell me how to fix this problem which seems t not to be covered by any videos that I found um, yeah please let me know because what what I did um, was to look up that motor and to see what um, voltage um, I can pass to it safely and I got an adapter and um, use the output. Uh, in fact, I think I might have filmed it, I'm, I'm not sure, but I tested the, the motor and the motors are fine. Because if I give um, power to the motor, you can hear them spin. Oh, there we go. So I got an adapter and it's rated five volts and these motors can take between 
3 and 6 volts. So yeah, I've just connected that um, to the power supply, taped it up, and here am I just about to spin it, just to spin the motor, and yeah, so th they spin just fine, and so the, the laser head moves back and forth, and then the um, disc spinning motor spins just fine. So one video hints that if that if you do that and you find that they both work or the, the motor works, then there must be an electrical fault, a circuit fault or a board fault somewhere on the system. And there's there you go, look. So that, that works fine. So I'll try it on the on that one and you can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it. You can hear it spin. And uh, yeah, so is it a board fault somewhere? I mean, where do I find this fault? I can see some marks there. And it's like, yeah, I'm just checking the caps. That's all I know. Uh, People just say it's blown cap. There's one that's quite bulgy. Do I replace that one? No idea. So that's pretty much the state of this um, top half of this AWA unit. I just, I just uh, can't, can't seem to continue. Um, although. Saying that, I'm waiting for some new belts to arrive so I can repair the tape deck and maybe I don't need the CD player um, at all. So um, the other thing was I looked up um, a replacement um, CD um, enclosure or, or the transport, that the whole thing. And that was going to cost me more than I pay for this unit, which is, is going to cost me 50 quid plus. So um, I'm certainly not going to spend that. And uh, I can I can just use the CD holder as a, a teacup holder um, or something like that, because it does open and close. So. Yeah, so instead of playing a CD on it, I just place a, a mug of tea and uh, hopefully I'll drink it all before it closes and spills everywhere. Um, yeah, so we're approaching an hour mark and uh, I think you're sick of me ranting on, so I'm just going to uh, finish off here and uh, leave you with it not spinning. Uh, Harry Belafonte uh, CDR there um, so yeah there, there's me showing you how screwed up uh, that that first um, that um, screw how screw up that screw how uh, uh, threaded that screw is um, but I found that I could tw twist it off with my fingers just like I'm twisting it on at the moment and um, everything works fine. Yeah, you can see there that it's lacking the teeth, gripping it there, but seem to cr seem to um, grip the first, the top half. So that's cool. Yes. So um, hopefully, um, uh, some of you will watch this and help me out here. Um, But um, if you don't, well, just um, look forward to my um, future videos because I seem to be getting addicted to uh, buying audio equipment 
maybe secondhand audio equipment and watching videos about um, audio um, file records and CDs and um, and so forth. So watch me spend like loads of money on speakers. I watched uh, one one video where it says you need to spend 80% of your budget on the speakers and 20% on everything else. So imagine if I just spent 30 quid on a tape deck and a um, an amplifier, what well, I need to spend like 80 quid on a pair of speakers. Um, so I might do that actually because uh, I have seen um, a few advertised on Gumtree locally so I can go and pick them up but you know a pair of mission speakers for 60 quid is that worth it um, also um, uh, what about a pair of um, Q audio speakers for 50 quid are they worth it too? Um, not sure. Um, the other thing is, uh, my other half's going to kill me if I just end up buying loads of stuff, uh, which she doesn't understand and um, won't allow into the house or things like this. Uh, so this is me opening the the amplifier part, and again. It is absolutely filthy, so um, that's going to get it clean. But the thing is, um, everything seems okay with that, uh, just dirty rather than broken. So that's me after a first pass. Everything is uh, hoovered up, and some of it's been brushed away. Um, it needs a bit more cleaning, but there's some places I can't get to without dismantling it and I wasn't in the mood for dismantling that sort of stuff but um, the only thing worrying about this is like some of the metal-y bits are a bit rusty um, so I don't know um, why they're rusting but hey the power supply is okay on that side okay uh, yeah, so the connections are all okay. And uh, yeah, I cleaned it up, put it back together. And as you saw um, midway through this video, I, oh no, no, that was a different one. So um, yeah, so, oh, that's it. Went back to the beginning and that's exactly an hour of recording. Um, so, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you next time. Bye.